The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 608. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap Chan, and today I have a phenomenal lady on the show today. She is a peak performance coach, a speaker, and also the founder of The Ultimate Life. And I'm really excited to have her on and share her story with us today on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Camille Rose Soler. Camille, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to the listeners. Sure. Thanks for having me on the show, Sheena. I really appreciate it. You pretty much covered the gamut. (laughs) I am a peak performance coach and a speaker. I guess you could say at the core, I'm really a teacher and it's what I love to do. I work with leaders, business owners, entrepreneurs, and a lot of just high performing individuals in helping them get to the next level in their mindset and their ability to make wiser decisions and to kind of unlock new layers of their abilities to be able to lead, to be able to grow and to be able to create. So for simplicity terms, I guess I get to work very deeply on the psychological and energetic side of really high level performers. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Camille, what's your cultural background? Both of my parents are from the Philippines, so they're both born and raised there in uh, Manila from my mom, and I believe my father was born in an area called Quezon. And uh, my mother's side is actually three quarters Filipino and a quarter Jewish, German, French. So uh, my grandmother on my mom's side is actually half uh, Jewish, German, French. And my father's side is Spanish, Filipino. So that's our background. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? I really like the quote by Gandhi when he said, be the change you wish to see in the world. And the reason that I like that one so much is that it puts the responsibility back into our hands, especially when we get very caught up in the idea of, oh, I wish the world was like this, or I wish people were more like this. And really at the end of the day, my answer to that is always, okay, then you need to be that. And that I can control. I can't control uh, what other folks do, but I can certainly always control my perspective and my response. So I love that one a lot. Thanks for sharing that. And I, you know, totally agree with you. I mean, it was one of the reasons why I started the show is just I didn't see anybody, you know, showcasing women, especially Asian women out there who did go through so many hurdles and challenges to be the confident person that they are. So I figured I might as well start it, right, and see where it goes. Um, so I totally <laughs> believe that too. Like if you want, you know, to be that change you wish to see in the world it has to start from from you. So thanks for sharing that great quote. And in your in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? To me, self-confidence is the full understanding and acceptance that you and God or source are one. And, and it sounds simple and yet deep, (laughs) because that's just for me, what really resonates when I really came to accept that that which I came from, and all that I experience now in life is one entity, it just it changed my world, and really how I operate and how I do things. So that's how I approach self confidence that what I experience as God or the higher self of my being, and that which I do on a daily basis, or who I am, that is one entity. And so that gives me a lot of self-confidence because it makes me feel infinitely powerful (laughs) in a lot of ways in my life. Thanks for sharing that great definition. And Camille, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? You know, to be honest, I think on the outside, most of my friends and family and maybe even folks that have worked with me in the past may have seen that my outside life actually looks quite similar. They might have described me as, oh, you're always been very driven and very confident and and calm. And they are correct in that sense. But on the inside, before really discovering this definition of self-confidence, I'll be honest in that I always felt like I was striving and grasping and basically not feeling good enough. And there are still times where I struggle with that. But now I have a much deeper sense of peace and centeredness in in how I live my life, how I move through my life and how I walk through my journey as an entrepreneur, as a leader, as a daughter, um, as a cousin, like all these different roles that I play in my life. It's just more centered now. Whereas before, it it was like grasping for air, grasping for straws, always trying to do things to be good enough. Now I rest in the knowing 
that I am good enough. So things overflow from me versus me trying to fill my cup externally with all these different things. And while there's nothing wrong with filling yourself, you know, good books, podcasts, coaches, school, it was coming from a place of insecurity and lack and stress that I'd never get there, anxiety that I'd never get there. So my life felt very uh, fragmented and on the brink of anxiety <laughs> a lot of the times that no matter how much I did, it would never be good enough. So that, that's what it was like before self-confidence. Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, I think that's something we all go through, especially that anxiety, right? Feeling like we're never good enough, feeling like we have to do and be more, not realizing who we are is just more than enough. And especially, you know, with our upbringing, it's like we're constantly programmed to like be the best, do the best, keep doing at it, keep going to the next level. I mean, there's nothing wrong with going to the next level, but it's like if we're not satisfied, not satisfied, if we're not grateful for where we are in the present moment, then we'll never appreciate, you know, the next level that we go to. And, you know, what was that point in your life where you realized you were more than enough to just be who you are today and have, you know, that the life that you have? What was that aha moment? You know, when I read your aha moment, it's really interesting. A good girlfriend of mine, another boss lady, she calls them defining moments. So while I've had a lot of defining moments in my life, I'd say the most recent one that change the game for me currently is when I was at a, I was actually at a Tony Robbins seminar called Unleash the Power Within back in 2015 uh, in Chicago. And there was a point at the seminar where probably five to 6,000 people were up jumping, screaming. He was doing like the whole transformational process piece and he's jumping on stage and his energy is wild. And I was standing in the very back of the room, just observing it all. And as I was witnessing him on stage, moving the people and the room the way he did, something about that moment spoke to me very deeply to the point where when I was standing in the back of the room, I just remember feeling a surge of electricity run from the top of my head all the way down to the tips of my toes. And it just completely energized my body. And in that same moment, I remember I heard a whisper in my heart, literally that said, and this is exactly what I need you to do. And that moment scared the crap out of me. <laughs> and it excited me all at the same time. And that's when I made the decision that I was going to change my entire career and calling from that moment forward. I, I call it, I, I picked up the phone <laughs> that the universe had been ringing to me for a really long time, which was to speak and to teach and to coach people to live what I call the ultimate life or their ultimate life. Thanks for sharing that. And it's amazing when you can find what your purpose is, right? And yeah, it's scary and, and great at the same time. But you know, it's just it feels good. It feels right. And that flow, you have that flow that it just it's just kind of effortless. I mean, there's always hard. Yeah, there's always going to be days where you're frustrated or things won't go your way. But in the end, it's still gonna still have that flow. And you still know that what you're doing is in the right path. And because of that, what's your life been like now? It's, it's crazy because it's been nonstop learning and training and teaching and giving and expanding growth creation. And I even wrote, I remember when I was reflecting on these questions, forgiveness. And that was really unique to me because while it sounds really great to learn and grow and create and it's an output, one of the biggest blocks that I had was in unforgiveness. And I was shocked at how much forgiveness transformed different parts of my life. Uh, forgiveness of myself, forgiveness of people in my past, but essentially the, the universal law of holding on to something that poisons me, thinking, of course, that I'm going to hurt or poison the other person, as the saying goes, uh, but that in fact it was holding me back and it was killing me inside. So while I love what I do and I've never felt more in flow than I do at this point in my life. And granted, there is hard work as always, but the thing that really unblocked the, the current, if you will, from flowing as quickly as it has now is removing contempt and removing resentment and anger that I had with people. And it, it, to be honest, it's not a one-time act. It is an everyday habit, constantly in the movement of forgiveness. Uh, and if I were to actually say a second quote that I really love is that, to know all is to forgive all. And, and that's what I mean when I say I've been learning so much and expanding so much so that I can give and teach and help more people. But in that learning has also come the understanding that, wow, we really all are just doing the best that we can with what we know how. And so with that knowing also comes increased forgiveness and grace for other people. And th that includes myself. 
Thanks for sharing that. And to the woman who's listening to your episode, she may be in her own journey to self-confidence. What would be that one tip you would give to her? The one tip I would give to her is kind of broken down into three parts. So the first part would be get very real with yourself. Only you know what it is that you need to do to take it to the next level, to expand. So that might be forgiveness. That might be letting go of an old habit or maybe even a relationship in your life that is no longer serving you. So that's what I mean is get very real with yourself about what that thing is that you must do. The second thing is after you get real, then become very kind to yourself. Because while men do it too, I see it more often with women that we hold ourselves up to this crazy standard of perfection. And so when we get real with ourselves and we say like, okay, Camille or Sheena, it's time to get off your butt and run every single morning or whatever it is. Then we go into judgment mode super harsh judgment mode. (laughs) So that doesn't help either, right? Because then we just set this whole new standard of perfection. So I'd say number one, get real with yourself. And then number two, immediately after that, become very kind to yourself. Treat yourself as if you were a little girl. And if you saw a little girl doing what you're trying to do, trying to be better, trying to learn a new trade, trying to learn how to do something that she was not good at before, would you kick her? (laughs) Would you beat her over the head and say like, what's wrong with you? Or would you give her encouragement and grace and kindness? So I would say be very kind to yourself. And then the last one is once you get real and once you get the practice of kindness towards yourself, then trust your brilliance. Women especially, we are very wired to use our intuition in all that we do, not just with business, but in relationships and in life. And I think sometimes we don't trust that enough. There is a beauty and a depth in, in women's intuition. So I would say trust your brilliance that comes forth from you because it's really not just meant for you. Your your brilliance is meant to be shared with other people. You can help a lot of people. You can heal a lot of people in just sharing who you are, sharing your light. And, and for me personally, it's just always come in those three steps. Get real, be kind, and trust your wisdom. Thanks for sharing those great tips. And if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do or check out some of your work, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Absolutely. You can check out my website. It's www.theultimatelife, L-Y-F-E dot com. So that's live your fullest every day. That's what it stands for. You could also find me on Facebook, facebook.com slash Camille Rose. That's Camille with a K. You can also get me on Instagram. Just look up Camille Rose again with a K or The Ultimate Life, L-Y-F-E. And the last thing I would say to check out is you can go to YouTube, just search on YouTube, Camille Rose Solaire. Again, Camille with a K. And you'll you'll find me, connect to me. I'd love to hear from anyone who you know wants to take it to the next level. And if there's anything I can do to help or even point them in the right direction, I'd love to do that. Thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Camille, you can also head on over to the TaoSelfConfidence.com and search for Camille's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I just really want to thank Camille for taking the time to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Camille. Oh, you're so welcome, Sheena. Thanks for having me, girl. Not a problem. It was really great having you on the show. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. Get your free audiobook by visiting our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.